Welcome back to Run Through TV. My name is Ben Shepherd. Are you ready to be blown away? Today's guest, I think, did one of my favourite challenges of 2020. Hi, I'm Alex Sunnyforth. I'm an endurance adventurer. I'm a motivational speaker, an author, and a director of Mind Over Mountains, which is a mental health charity restoring mental health through outdoor experiences and. I'm from Chester originally. I've been living in the South Lakes in Kendall for about 18 months now, spending a lot of time running in the fells, and I've been a runner on and off now for probably over eight years or so, um, doing a variety of challenges, both in the Himalayas with two attempts on Everest, um, as well as close to home. Uh, recently doing um, my biggest challenge to date, which is running the National Three Peaks, climbing Ben Nevis, Scarfell Pike and Snowdon, and running the 452 miles between them in nine and a half days, which uh, that again raised 11,000 pounds for charity as well. Yeah, you heard that right. Alex decided to do the traditional three peaks challenge, but instead of getting a minibus between the mountains, he decided to run. Pretty, uh, pretty incredible, I think. What motivated Alex to do such a monumental challenge? I think originally my very, very first challenge when I found the outdoors about probably 10 years ago, um, I found the outdoors as a way to, to manage a lot of my childhood, you know, obstacles and challenges, such as epilepsy and my stammer and being relentlessly bullied and, you know, you know, anxiety and panic attacks. And, and the outdoors gave me a freedom for that. And one of the first things I attempted was the National Free Peaks in the normal way. You know, I was driven between them and, and you do that in less than uh, 24 hours. But I think when I got into running, that was my focus for a while. Um, in 2014 and 15, I made uh, two expeditions on Everest, which ended in disaster. I've done another Himalayan expedition, but then since then, I've kind of been focusing on big endurance challenges close to home. Uh, 2017, uh, climbing to the highest points of all 100 counties, cycling, walking and running uh, 5,000 miles. And since then, I think I've, I've been longing to do another UK-based endurance challenge and just make the best of what we have in our home soil. And I think as a runner, I started to get into, into fell running and into you know longer runs in the hills instead of just chasing times and trying to improve all my times on marathons. And, and that can be a bit of an endless process. And uh, I guess I moved away from um, road racing to, to doing something different. And the Three Peaks ticked all the boxes. You know, it was ridiculous. It was very different, uh, it hadn't really been done that many times before and it just combined that kind of UK adventure with long running and um, playing to my strengths really and uh, I think to be able to raise money for charity, my, my target was uh, £10,000, was to do something a bit extreme, you know there's a lot of people doing challenges nowadays but it's something that scared me and excited me in equal measure. Amazing, just amazing and all for charity as well Alex, through this journey raised over £11,000 Pounds. But how did he feel standing at the bottom of his first mountain, Ben Nevis, with nine days ahead of him? There'd been nine months of planning. You know, I committed to the challenge at the end of um, 2019. So there was a big lead up, obviously, with the year we've had. It was pushed back from May to August, which I'm grateful for. You know, it gave me a lot more time for planning and prep um, and more time to train. So I think by that point, you, you kind of feel there's this invisible pressure of, you know, nine months of prep and investment and time and effort and focus, which could all go wrong if you make a mistake. There's that invisible pressure on you, but I think, to be honest, leading up to it, I didn't have the process I wanted. Although for these things, you rarely do. I just sprained my ankle about a week before I was due to start. This is after, you know, you know, after COVID, after various setbacks with training and injuries and illness and worries and falling out with, you know, a coach and things like that. and. I think it was, I was just desperate to get the thing done. I wanted it out of my life. It had been causing so much fear and anxiety. Um, but then with the ankle, I then had to postpone the start by another two weeks. So I had this like taper tantrum from hell, you know, because for two weeks I was obsessed with this ankle. Was it going to hold up? What, what was going to happen? People were advising me not to do it. You know, common sense and my gut was really going against me. But I felt that this was the only opportunity I had. And... I was going into it with this massive unknown. I already had a massive unknown whether I was going to be able to manage, you know, nearly 50 miles a day. Um, 
but in some ways I was more fixated on the ankle, whether that was going to hold up rather than anything else. I didn't even think I was going to get past day one. Mm. So at that time, I'm at the bottom of the den, I had a friend with me, Rich, who was very grateful to have somebody there to bounce the energy off who could reassure me. But I think uh, I just felt sick, absolutely sick. And when I started the watch at about half four in the morning, there was just this relief of right, I've committed. And that first step is always the hardest bit. And of course, there were so many ups and downs throughout the journey. Let's talk high and low points, starting with the low point. On day five, I'd, the, I'd got Storm Francis to deal with. I was coming into Carlisle and I was behind. And my shins were so bad that I could literally could not run more than 10 metres at a time. It was just like a slow shuffle walk, slow shuffle walk. Um, and that wasn't just a bit of a niggle, this was like proper pain that I've never had before. At that point, I was just contemplating how on earth I could possibly do another five miles, let alone 50. And luckily, the support came at the right time. Um, and I think at that point, I was already a day behind schedule. But the lowest point I remember emotionally was the next day when I'd actually got back on track. I saw a, you know, I saw a sports massage in Keswick who actually gave me the all clear. She said, okay, Right, your ankles are obviously swollen. You've got all the things that we would expect from somebody doing what you're doing. We know it's not good for you, but actually there's no reason why you shouldn't carry on. So that was a relief. I fell back in the game at that point. Um, but on that day on Scarfell Pike, uh, luckily I'd escaped the bad weather. It started really well, but I'd actually managed to stumble down the stairs in the hostel that morning and strained the perineal. So not only did I have you know everything else that had started to fall apart over the last few days once I hit tarmac, um, you know, I was kind of hobbling a little bit with this, this strain in, in the tendon. So I got scarf or pike done, but I was having to literally hobble down to avoid obviously straining this, this calf more. Um, I, I was now late behind schedule. I knew I wasn't going to make it to, you know, well, I wasn't going to make it all the way, all, you know, all the way I planned. Um, and then when I got into just into Langdale off scarf or pike, I remember having an email of a sponsor basically you know asking me to, to stop because they could see I was in a lot of pain and I wasn't going to make the I wasn't going to finish and beat my time and that was a bit of a knock because mm. that's when I started to really question whether I was doing the right thing um, it was dark pretty soon it was chucking down with rain as I expected you know you know in the lakes that was you knowing I was back home um, and then the pain got worse and worse to the point that I was trying to run as fast as I could to get to the finish, but I was just hobbling and hobbling more and more until I just couldn't, couldn't run anymore. And um, that was, to me, the lowest ebb. You know, I genuinely did not see any way that I could possibly continue now. And I remember just being by the road, just in tears, absolutely just in bits. I mean, talk about overcoming adversity. We've spoken about low points. Now it's only right we turn our attention to high points. Obviously, the finish, you know, just to, just to know that it was over, the pain was over, um, was was a real high point. It's more than three months ago now, and, and I'm I think I'm very proud of the fact that I broke through the doubt. You know, it was probably the most physically difficult thing I've done, but actually there were so many unknowns, and I've never gone into a challenge before with that many unknowns. I know there's Everest and there's the expeditions and the high mountains, but actually there were so many things that were working against me. Not only COVID, but the you know just the ankle, let alone. And I think when we prove our own doubts wrong, that to me is the most powerful thing because those doubts are probably the biggest obstacle that we all face. Powerful, powerful words. Thank you so much to Alex for coming on. He's still so young as well and he's done so many incredible things and raised so much money for charity. So again, big thank you, Alex. Um, If you want to check out Alex's Instagram as well, I would definitely, definitely advise you to do that to see some of the highlights of his incredible journey and some of the previous challenges he's done as well. If you would like to subscribe to Run Through TV, we would love you to do that. Please do pop this video a like as well and I will catch you again in the next video.